All right, great eight. I hope that we're doing well there. And today's session, we will continue grammar. The last session, we start at page 61. Right. What will the last page do? We told guys. Can you check, please, quickly? Sixty nine. We will start with seventy. Traveling sentence beginning. That's awesome. Nine. Actually, we're going to use this now. All right. So, and to this session, we will speak about varying the sentence beginning. What do we mean by varying the sentence beginning? Anyone? Something um, subject. Yes, nice. So, to speak about the sentence beginning, then we are speaking about that uh, the sentence consists of a subject, a verb, and the complete uh, meaning. This complete meaning it can have an object, and have an adverb. An adjective, a prepositional phrase, a time reference, right? All of that can be included as to give you the complete meaning of the sentence. Right? So usually we start our sentence using the subject, then the verb, and later we can bring one of these or even some of them together. So to change or to alter or to vary the sentence beginning, so simply you need to start with one of these. And just as we have studied before, the only reason to change the sentence beginning or to alter the sentence or to mix the sentence is to add emphasizes on one part that you are starting with. So can anyone give me a sentence, complete sentence, containing, for example, a positional phrase or a time reference? So here, Yes. Give me any sentence. Um, Muhammad cut the onions. Can you add a time reference or a prepositional phrase? Muhammad is the subject, cut is the verb. Oh, no, add a propositional phrase to the sentence or a time reference. Like, with what or when? A, a, a propos mm. Muhammad cut the onions with a yellow knife. So, in this sentence, what are the parts of the speech we have? The subject, verb, ob uh, subject, verb, object, and a propositional phrase. Probably. So we have the subject, Muhammad. We have uh, the verb, cut. 
we have the onions is the direct object with is a proposition the yellow is an adjective and knife is the object of the proposition and with a yellow knife is the propositional phrase that's great so to vary the sentence beginning so all we need to do is just to do like this the same example but take this and go cut and put it here and after it a come with a yellow knife Muhammad cut the onion so what is the difference between the two sentences? I just alternate the sentence. I just okay. made it simply change. Muhammad put cut the onions with a yellow knife. Yeah, you put the with prepositional the... phrase in front. Yes. To start with the prepositional phrase, then what did I do? What is the importance by starting with the prepositional phrase? Um I Listen to the sentence. Muhammad, Muhammad cut the onions with the yellow knife, and with the onion. yellow knife, yellow Muhammad knife. cut the onions. Yes. And one with the yellow knife, Muhammad cut the onions. So, in the first one, I was adding the emphasis to our subject. So I need to now you that. add the cut main the sentence. But here I'm adding the emphasis to what? To the main. To the professional phrase. Wait, my mom's gone. For one second. That's why we just started with it. So once you alter your sentence, the beginning of your sentence, uh, the object, the professional phrase, the adverb, whatever you are starting with, you are adding the emphasizement to that part. As in? Yes, you don't. Give me an example containing an adverb. Um, you can say, fortunately, dogs are easy to train. That was what? Fortunately, dogs are easy to train. Fortunately, that was easy. And easy, the last word I can't hear it. Train. Train. Yes. That. And easy. Train. Like this. Say instead of me. So, that was an easy train, fortunately, and fortunately, that was an easy train. So, what is the difference between both? One has the adverb at the first of the sentence. So, once we start with the adverb, We are adding the emphasizements to the adverb. Once we start with the adverb, we are adding the emphasizement to the adverb. We are adding the emphasizement to the propositional phrase. If you are starting with an adjective, if you are starting with the time reference, so we add our emphasizements to the sentence or to, to the part we are starting our sentence with. So in your book, page 70, varying the sentence beginning. So we can start our sentence using various of things. Number one, we can start the sentence using a noun, using an adverb, using an infinitive, using a gerund form, or even using the propositional phrase. And of course, you can use the adverb. We have some examples here. Dogs, fortunately, are easy to train. Fortunately, dogs are easy to train. To train dogs, fortunately, is easy. Training dogs, fortunately, is easy. 
And for people who have dogs, uh, training them is easy. So once again, we can vary our sentence beginning in order to do what? In order to add emphasizements to our own sentence. So sentence beginning can be varied by reversing the traditional object verb order in order to start the sentence with an adverb or even a phrase. And while doing that, while changing the beginning, it can add variety to the sentence. Any, uh, any questions so far? Abdul Malik Muhammad. Anna. Those who don't have a mic. All right, in practice number A, we are asked to read each sentence and then uh, we are asked to write whether the underline noun is uh, a noun or the word here, a noun infinitive gerund or even a propositional phrase. So, number one, Hamad al Khayat. Yeah. Yes, teacher. And number one, identify the part of speech of the underlying word. Scorpions look scary and they have a painful state. Noun. Okay, yes. Noun. Muhammad al Khaleh. Muhammad Al Falah, if you don't have a mic, you can type in the chat number two. Never had we seen such a ridiculous movie as the one we saw last night. Muhammad Al-Khalaf is dead. Hassan? Yes, teacher. Number two, never had we seen such a ridiculous movie as uh, the one we saw last night. So never is? Adverb. An adverb. Muhammad Latibi, number three. To fix uh, the flat tire on her car, uh, Lauren needed the entire iron. Yes. Yeah. What part of the speech is uh, the underlying word? Position okay. uh, Good point, Muhammad. Thank you very much. What are the difference for you between saying? Study hard. You need to set your goals. the people yeah. beyond environment is very important. What is the difference between the two examples we have here? To study hard and to the people in Riyadh. 
Yes. Uh, in the sentence to the people in Riyadh, you are like giving a direction to the people where they are. And in the first one, it's an infinite word. Uh, so, difference with the position of the for the preparation of the give you direction. And the first one doesn't. Yes, continue. So in another word, you are saying that in the first example, you started with the verb in infinitive. On the other hand here, we don't have a verb, but we have now. So both of them, they start with a preposition. Right, we have here two, and here we have two. But after two, in the first example, we have a verb. Yet on the other hand, after two, in the second example, we have a noun. Consequently, the first one is called infinitive form. Infinitive form to study, to play, to run, to eat, to do whatever you want to do. So we have two, and after two, we have verb in infinitive. It's called infinitive form. On the other hand, once we have the proposition two, and after two we have an hour, then this is the object of a proposition, and that is called a propositional phrase. A propositional phrase. Thank you very much, Axie. And thanks, Thomas, for your answer. So here is number three to fix the flat tire. That's And number four, Abdul Aziz Asana, you can answer in the chat if you don't have a mic. Getting the dirt of the dog's pose was harder than it looked. So, getting here is a noun, an adverb, infinitive, gerund, or a propositional phrase. Samar Kuleb. Now I feel the Okay. Getting the dirt of the dogs was, was harder than it looked. It's a gerund. It's a gerund, bravo. So the meaning of a gerund. A gerund, guys, means yeah. a verb of ing. What to I use as a noun when you have a verb plus ing and you start your sentence with it, it's used as a noun. Getting the dirt of the dog's paw was harder than it. Last but not least, without a U.S. passport, Americans cannot enter other countries. Khalid al Atibi, are you with us? You can answer in the chat. I have got a lot of dead people today. Abdul Rahman Nabil. Okay, 
course, without is a proposition, so it's a propositional phrase. On the other hand, in practice number B, we are asked to read the sentence and then to write them to vary the beginning using the sentence part in each parenthesis. So, for example, my uh, plan, my plan was to prepare the food the day early, starting with the gerund. So, preparing the food the day early was my plan. And number one. Slavic languages can be challenging to learn. Can I ask? Yes, I see. Challenging languages. Wait, uh, you see. Challenging Slavic languages can be with them. Okay. Challenging the languages can be Slavic languages. I see. What yes. is the action verb in this sentence? Challenging. No. Can. No. Can is a model verb. Learn. Yes. So bring the action verb and put ing to it. So Slavic languages can be challenging. Yes. Learn. Learning. Slavic languages can be challenged. Just like that. The easiest one is the one with the propositional phrase. Try to choose from uh, the Dutch Republic at the festival. You have two here. Yes. You have from the Dutch Republic and the other ones at the festival. So we can start with. Uh, at the festival, know. we try foods from the Dutch. Course capital A. So at the festival, we try food from the Zich Republic. And don't forget the comma after the prepositional phrase. Though we can say even from the Zich Republic, we try food at the festival. Both of them are correct. No one, surprisingly, claimed the money Paul found in the shop. So, so surprisingly, exactly. in the no one. Exactly. Surprisingly, no one claimed the money for found them the ship. After the storm, three branches of blocked some neighborhoods. That's a pretty easy one. And actually, it's at the opposite of the starting with the proposition. Teacher, can you go up? I will just click OK. And I'm going to upload that. I have no idea now. Finished? Yup. Okay, number four, after the storm, three branches block the some neighborhood street. So we need to start with the noun. Neighborhood, neighborhood streets were blocked by, by the three branches after the storm. 
Nice. But in order to do that, you will say neighborhood streets where blocked and you will change it into passports. But you just can say just like this. So all we did was what? All we did was just bringing the propositional phrase at the end of the sentence. It's the totally opposite of starting the sentence with a propositional phrase. Because we start our sentence with either a noun or a pronoun. Right? As a subject, a noun or a pronoun. So in order to change the subject, start with it. Just remove the adverb or remove whatever you have already put instead of the noun. The adverb, the infinitive, the gerund, or the propositional phrase. And number five, Dana studied several famous speeches to prepare for her presentation. That's also pretty easy. Find the infinitive and start the sentence with it. So we will start using what? Uh, you can use to prepare. Bravo. And don't forget to put a comment. Prepare for her presentation. And I started several famous speeches. You can your, take your time writing it down. Can you hear me? Yes. Finish. Yes. Yes, teacher. Okay, that's a great part. Quality writing makes your school work better and helps you stand out in the process. Do you get stressed when you have to write? You don't know where to start? Your sentences yeah, yeah. always sound the same. That is just what writing is. Terrifying! <laughs> Here are six ways to start a sentence. One, the subject. One of the best ways to start a sentence is to put the subject first and the verb second. The subject of a sentence is the person, place, thing, or idea. It has to be followed by a verb, a word that tells you what the subject is doing. I cooked spaghetti. The dog ran home. John read a book. Number two, explaining where or when something happens. You can start a sentence with words that tell you where something is happening. On the beach, there was a shipwreck. Or it could be beside the beach, by the beach, near the beach. You can also start a sentence with words that tell you when something is happening. After school, we played computer games. Or it could be before school. Don't forget to use a comma. <sighs> Number three, 
Number three, asking a question. Have you ever thought of starting a sentence with a question? A question makes the reader think. Which songs do you like best? La, 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 la. Who is the richest person in the world? Make sure you answer your question in the next sentence. Have you brushed your teeth today? Forgetting to brush your teeth leads to bad breath and tooth decay. <laughs> oh. Or an ing phrase. You can start a sentence with an action ending in ing. Looking at the clock, she realized she was going to be late. Sitting on the beach, I watched the sun set over the ocean. Running home quickly, she got soaked in the pouring rain. Or you can use a doing word ending with ed. Frightened by the loud fireworks, the dog hid under the table. Excited about her birthday, she woke up very early. If you do start with ing or ed words, don't forget to use a comma before you complete the sentence. Six ly words. Finally, the last way to start a sentence is using an ly word. Carefully, she tiptoed past the sleeping monster. Hungrily, the dog chewed the bone. These L-Y words also need a comma before you write the rest of the sentence. Well, now you know six different ways to start a sentence. Before you start writing, add them to your plan to remind you to use them, and you'll find that writing isn't so scary after all. <laughs> And these are the ways that we can vary the sentence beginning with. I hope you enjoyed today. Great day and see you tomorrow.